Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we'll be covering topic 2.7, which is ecological succession. Our objective for the day's video is to be able to describe what ecological succession is, but also to describe the different effects that ecological succession has on an ecosystem's structure. The skill that we'll be practicing at the end of today's video is a data analysis skill, and it will involve looking at a set of data and trying to draw conclusions based on the trends we see in those data. So ecological succession refers to a series of predictable changes that occurs in a forest ecosystem. There's two different types. And the first type is referred to as primary succession. In primary succession, the area has only bare exposed rock. So there's no previously formed soil. The process involves moss and lichen, which are species of plants that have their seeds or their spores dispersed by the wind. So the wind carries in those seeds and moss and lichen are actually uniquely adapted to grow directly on rocks. They're able to break the rocks down by secreting acids, which releases the nutrients that they need to grow. And so if we look at a diagram, what we'll see here is that we start with this bare rock. Then as the wind carries in those seeds, the moss and the lichen are able to colonize or start going on the rock that breaks the rock down into smaller bits and eventually forms soil over time. In secondary succession, on the other hand, we're starting in an area that already has previously established soil, but the plants in that ecosystem have been cleared away by some sort of large disturbance. So that could be a wildfire, could be a windstorm, or even a human disturbance like clearing an area of land to use for agriculture. We're also going to see some pioneer species or some initial species move in similar to in primary succession, but the big difference is that these first species to arrive are going to be grasses, sedges, and wildflowers. And these are species that are quick growing and they have their seeds dispersed by the wind or by animals. So if we look at a diagram of secondary succession, you'll notice the big difference is that there is established soil already existing. It's just that a disturbance has cleared out the existing plant community and that leaves the soil open for these pioneer species to come in and start to take up root. Now we'll talk about the basic steps of succession, which are common to both primary and secondary. So really the only difference between those two is the starting stage, whether or not there's already established soil. After that, it's relatively the same process. So it's important to understand that these stages of succession or this process is marked by which types of plant species dominate the ecosystem during each stage. And that's because different species are adapted to the different conditions that occur in each phase or each stage of succession. So we always start with pioneer or early successional species. These are the first species to appear in the area and they are able to become established either on the bare rock, if we're talking about primary succession or in the recently disturbed soil, if we're talking about secondary succession. They share some characteristics, which is that they are dispersed by the wind, meaning that their seeds are often carried by the wind to the area or by animals who may eat the seeds and then disperse them in their waste or the seeds may get stuck to the animal's fur. So we have a picture here of the wind blowing seeds to help us remember that pioneer species need to be able to be dispersed by the wind or by animals. Some examples would be moss and lichen if we're talking about bare rock that occurs in primary succession or wildflowers, uh, plants that produce berries like raspberries or grasses and sedges if we're talking about secondary succession. Pioneer species are always followed by mid-successional species. Mid-successional species appear after a couple years where the pioneer species have built up the soil. So it's a little bit deeper and a little bit more nutrient rich. And so what happens is those pioneer species as they grow and die, grow and die, their biomass or their organic matter gets added to the soil and that increases the richness of the soil and increases the depth over time, which eventually enables the mid-successional species to come in. Those mid-successional species share some characteristics as well. They're gonna be fast growing. They're gonna be a little bit larger than the pioneer species. So they're gonna grow a little bit slower. They're typically going to need a little bit deeper soil with more nutrients than those pioneer species were able to tolerate. But they're also able to be tolerant of full sunlight and that's because there's no shade in the ecosystem yet. If we look at a diagram, we can see here that it takes some time for the shrubs and these smaller trees, which are mid-successional species to arrive because those pioneers have to build up that soil depth for them 
And they're also just species that grow a little bit more slowly. So these trees, you know, take years to start to develop. And so they're not going to be seen right, you know, the first or second year after a disturbance. If we want some examples to remember, we can think of shrubs and bushes, you know, things that take a couple of years to start developing. Same thing with trees that are fast growing. So pine and cherry are two great examples of mid-successional species. And then we have late successional species, which as their name implies, are the last species to colonize or to start growing in an area. We also sometimes call these members of a climax community because a climax is at the end of the transition. And so it takes them quite a while to arrive. So they are going to be able to start growing after the soil has been deepened and enriched further by this process of the early and mid successional species dying and having their biomass and their nutrients added to the soil. All of these late successional species share some characteristics. Those would be that they are large, slow growing trees that are tolerant of shade. Now they take a long time to grow and develop, but they're able to develop in the shade of these mid successional species. That's an important characteristic of them. And they need deep nutrient rich soil to anchor their roots because they're oftentimes very large trees that can grow to hundreds of feet tall. Maples and oaks are great examples, as well as other large trees that reach heights of hundreds of feet. And if we look at this diagram here, what I like about this is it helps us remember that we need this soil to be built up over time. So we would not have deep enough soil, you know, a couple years or even 10 or 20 years after primary succession. It takes hundreds of years to get soil deep enough to support the roots of these large shade tolerant and slow growing trees. And so again, we would call this here a climax community because it's at the end of succession. It takes hundreds of years for the soil to be built up and for these trees to grow and emerge from the canopy of the mid successional trees. So as a reminder, that early mid to late successional process is common to both primary and secondary succession. The main difference is just the starting material of those two. And so primary succession, you'll remember, starts from bare rock. This is an ecosystem that has not previously had soil present. And this can also often occur after a volcanic eruption or after a glacial retreat. That's because those are both events that will leave bare rock without soil on top of it. And so very important to remember that moss and lichen are the colonizers or the pioneer species in primary succession. And that's because their spores or their seeds are easily blown in by the wind but then also they're uniquely adapted to grow on rock. They have a unique adaptation that enables them to secrete acids into the rock. Those acids will actually break down or chemically weather the rock so that the minerals in those rocks that have the nutrients that the moss and lichen need will be released and those moss and lichen can then absorb the nutrients into their bodies. So these are things like potassium, phosphorus, and nitrogen. And again, this is really critical to primary succession starting. Without this chemical weathering, we wouldn't have the formation of soil. So as the rock starts to break down, there are smaller bits of rocks that mix together with the dead biomass or the dead organic matter from the moss and the lichen as they eventually die. And all of that kind of mixes, mixes together and forms this initial rocky, shallow soil. So if we look at it, this picture here, we can see this is a lava flow where there is exposed rock after the lava has cooled and it's gonna be colonized first by these lichen. And then we have this diagram that we did look at before, but it's a great reminder that we have this bare rock. And then eventually the rock is starting to be broken down by the secretion of the acid by moss and lichen. And then eventually we get just the very beginnings of really rocky shallow soil here. And then from there, the process is the same as we've discussed. We have our pioneers, our early successional species, followed by our mid successional species, followed by our late successional or climax community species. And finally, we'll wrap up by focusing in a little more detail on secondary succession. So remember, this is in an area where there's already established soil, but most of the plant community has been removed by some sort of disturbance. So pioneers are still going to be the first species to arrive in this area, and they're going to be plants that have their seeds dispersed either by the wind or by animals, and they're gonna be fast growing and sun tolerant but they're going to be wildflowers, grasses and sedges, as opposed to the moss and lichen, who are our pioneers or colonizing species in primary succession.
important to point out that the soil is already established here, and sometimes it's even enriched if the disturbance was a forest fire. Now that's because forest fires burn down the previous plants that were in the area, and they return a lot of the nutrients that those plants have been storing back to the soil. So soil in the wake of a forest fire is often actually very nutrient rich and really jump starts the process of secondary succession. So if we look at this diagram here, I know we've seen this one before, but it's a great reminder that we do start with a disturbance of some sort, often a forest fire, but it could be a human disturbance like clearing land for agriculture, or even just a windstorm or a flood, anything that dramatically reduces the plant community and basically enables these pioneer species to come in and dominate. So remember our pioneer species in this case are going to be grasses, sedges, weed species that have their seeds dispersed by the wind. They're also going to be very fast growing. They're going to be full sun tolerant so they can handle that full sunlight. They colonize the area. They eventually die and build up the soil a little bit deeper for our mid successional species who are faster growing trees, bushes, and shrubs. And then finally, we have our late successional or our climax community species. I do want to point out that this process of secondary succession is faster than primary succession but it can still take upwards of 150 years for this climax community to form. That's because these late successional species are very slow growing. They need deep roots with a lot of nutrient rich soil to nourish those huge trees that are going to grow and anchor them. And so it is still a relatively slow process to reach a climax community. So for practice FRQ 2.7 today, we're going to practice the skill of analyzing data and drawing conclusions from those data. So what we have here is a graph showing the number of spruce trees per hectare in an ecosystem as time goes on after a glacial retreat. So based on this graph, I want you to explain whether or not you think the spruce tree is an early, middle, or late successional species. And remember that with explain, you need to justify your reasoning for this.